Welcome, welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. How's everyone today? Hit me in chat. Can you hear me first of all? Hello, Adrian, Gabriel, hello. Hi, Rod, Fitzgerald. Yes, you yes. can hear, sweet. Loud and clear, loud and clear. Awesome, love it. All right. Got everybody coming in here. I still see the number counting. Just we'll give just a sec here. And uh, doing great. I'm doing great, actually. It's a good day. The weather here in Michigan is really nice. I think we're going to do some cook outside today. It's a good day. Um, Kevin, Craig, David, awesome. Welcome, everyone. Jamin, is it Jamin Bruce? Sorry, it's rolling so fast. John, sorry. All right. So um, people are still coming in, but that's all right. Welcome to everyone. If you are new, you are here in the right place. Thank you, Frank, uh, about my wife. She's still in the hospital, but she is doing better and she's in the right place that she needs. So, so lots of hope there and she's in the right place. So thank you very much for the prayers of everyone and the thoughts. And uh, yeah, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. So today we are going to talk about foundational elements. But before we get started, I would like to show you something here. Let me share the screen and bring this over. Can anybody see, can we see my crazy background or can we see this here? Um, sorry, my chat went away. There it is. We can see the screen. Awesome, awesome. All right, so we are the wrong one. Here we go. All right, so before we get started, some of you probably saw this in the Facebook group and um, it's kind of a funny cartoon and I saw it and I laughed because people are going after chat GPT and they're milking it dry, right? So marketers, there's a saying, I think it's by Seth Godin, maybe not, but marketers ruin everything, right? So a lot of what we do is marketing and it's kind of funny. So at least I thought it was funny. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But what's important here is that I sat and I thought about this for a little bit. I looked at it and I realized that it's just not true. Um, and I think this is what most people think is happening right now is everybody's going after chat GPT and using it for all kinds of things. Google came out with their AI equivalent. They're going to integrate into Google called Bard. It didn't perform so well in the demos being announced. Of course, they own a huge part of or collaboration own, I think, open AI, which is chat GPT. So they're integrating all of that into Bing. Even in your browser, you'll be able to, you know, just summarize a website and do everything live. So it's going to change the way it works. But what I want us to understand here, if I can open your mind here before we start, is that this really isn't how it is. And after I thought about it, I realized that it's really a lot more like this. And I just hit me and I realized that AI, of course, is here to stay, but the Internet has changed things and we're, we're moving forward into a new era as everything gets shook up. And the opportunity is just endless. And so I think a lot of people are very, you know, and rightfully so short-sighted or they don't see it. But the truth is, is it looks like this with the field of cows, you're going after the milk and the opportunity here is just absolutely massive. So I don't know, this really hit me um, when I thought of it and realized that we are on like a turning point of the internet. There's been a couple of them so far, kind of like when we had radio and then TV, and then we had the internet. And then we had web 2.0 and then i think we're headed towards um a different era maybe what they want with web 3.0 where everything's segregated maybe not we'll see but i really think that this is a great time and i just wanted to share my thoughts maybe it'll hit somebody maybe it won't but i think that the real opportunity is right now so as we jump into this i mentioned before that we are going to do some core concepts like and talk about really what everything is so I know that some of you are returning from previous classes or you've purchased other classes online before, either from Chase or from, you know, somewhere else, someone else and that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so some great reactions to the image in chat GPT and that sort of stuff. Um, and which is great. And so I just want to kind of go over some basic stuff at the moment right now and just kind of break it down for those of you who are are new here or those of you who don't have a solid grasp on it. Um, this is kind of like this. So this is my nice little chart and I'm going to I'm going to develop this and we're going to go in depth here just in a second. But I just want to give a real basic level. So here's the concept. Um, this is the same concept, uh, not necessarily the video part, but the rest of this is the same concept that big businesses use from, you know, AT&T and Verizon to Coke and Pepsi and all the rest. Right. So basically, here's the thing. So we have some form of leads. Leads are people that are interested. Right. Um, or, or maybe they're just traffic at that point. You can, you know, 
split your terminology however you want. We're getting them from video. So we're making short form video. We could make long form video. We could make, you know, video on TikTok and YouTube and the list goes on, right? They travel into our CRM, which we talked about briefly last week, uh, which is host the landing page where they become a lead, where they enter their email address. And then the CRM also will send out the emails, which we have not yet talked about. And the emails that it's going to send out is to basically advertise our product to them. So it's sending them an email like, hey, bye. Now, you know this because you get emails from Chase constantly every single day offering you, you know, options or information or that sort of stuff. Also, if you've purchased anything from any company or signed up for any list, you have gotten emails from them. They are sending those emails in an automated way selling you stuff. And the ultimate goal is we want to get someone in, get them into the CRM, and then we want to offer them stuff all year long, every single day, right? And maybe not every single day in some niches, depending on what you're doing, what you're going to talk about today. But um, the concept is that we're going to keep offering them stuff. And we really want them. There's no money in the middle here. It's kind of like, love me or hate me. There's no money in the middle. And that was a, a quote by um, a famous marketer that works with ClickFunnels. And I'm not going to go you know, take credit for that. But the point here is that they either need to unsubscribe or they need to buy. There's really no point to have them on our list if they're not doing anything. So we aren't worried about that. We want them to do something. What are they going to buy? Well, they can buy affiliate products. Um, and we're going to talk about that. There's endless lists of those. They could, you could promote stuff like the course that you're very on, on right now, the short form riches, chat riches course. And you could promote services. Like we could sell them SEO or we could sell them, you know, whatever, right? Insurance even, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? Any kind of uh, physical product, that sort of stuff. Now, how we do that varies. But this is the, the basic concept. And so we talked about video last week, getting some videos. We talked about the landing page. We're going to cover all this in more depth. But this is a basic concept because I know a lot of people were kind of struggling with, okay, what are we going to be talking about? And we're going to kind of expand this over the next seven weeks that we have left here. But um, can give me a one in chat if this makes sense. Give me a two if you're on the fence or something's a little unclear. I just kind of want to get a gauge here. There's no wrong answer. It's okay either way. A lot of ones. I used to hate email lists, Rod, but you started to appreciate it. Right. Yeah, yeah, because it's a huge opportunity. And the truth is that we're going to be genuine. And if someone wants to unsubscribe, they unsubscribe. So we're not, you're not hurting them. You know, if they want to unsubscribe, they will. And if they don't, then they can stick around because they're interested enough. All right. So a lot of people got it. Um, a few people are on the fence and that's okay. Hang with us if you're on the fence. So so I'm going to develop this here for just a minute. I'm going to break it down. So here's what it looks like. For example, if we go to our next thing here, um, we have that I've got the video here. And what I've done is I went ahead and broke these out. So we still have our products on the side here that we're selling. And we still have video as our source of traffic. But I wanted to make it a little clearer that the video, the purpose of a lead. So we make a video and we say, hey, go buy this amazing course called Short Form Riches, you know, so you can learn how to make money online, right? With AI, right? Or whatever. You make a video, you put in your website um, on the video and it redirects them to the landing page, which we talked about, you know, last Thursday, they enter their email address, which then goes into the CRM. The CRM manages and houses all of the contacts. And it also houses the landing page, which is why you can see the blue arrow here. It also sends the emails, hence the blue arrow here. But we can see a little bit more visually because some people are visual, some people like text, some people like me to say it. So I'm trying to cover all the bases here to make it clear. And so then the CRM is actually going to send those emails on autopilot. And then again, we're just marketing to the services. Now, as we move down the road, and I don't want to stay with me here because this is, this is really, if you understand this and you get this, you are 99% ahead of most people out there and you have everything that you need to go off to the races. Now, you can still level up at some point because obviously, you know, wherever you are, like I can level up, I work on leveling up every day. We can then start to introduce something. This is again, the same thing. Now we can introduce a bridge page in between the emails and the offers. This helps with like conversion rate optimization. So you, the amount of people that you send over, like for every hundred people you send over, if five people buy, maybe if you add a bridge page, now seven people will buy. So we get more people to buy out of the same uh, quantity of traffic that we send over. So don't get lost on that. Um, you have to obviously have conversions and traffic and everything before we worry about increasing that because there's stuff we can do in the email department, the landing page department, the video department to increase conversions. But I just want you to understand that there is a, there is a ways to go, but if you just get, let's see if this, let me go back here. Okay, great. If you just get this, where we're going to make some videos, get them to a landing page, 
which is then going to put the email in the CRM, send some emails, and then hammer over here to our products, whatever it is that we're offering, then you are on point and you can make tens of thousands of dollars a month. I would like to clarify that tens of thousands of dollars a month doesn't come with one hour of work and then you retire on the beach. Okay, you have to work. The more work you, the more work you do, the more money you get paid, right? At the end of the day, because you can build something. But I think we all know that that this isn't a get rich quick scheme. This is like a real for life business. Like you do some work. We're just leveraging things so that we can do stuff in a more effective way. All right. So now that we're here, does that clear things up for anybody? Um, and I'm going to grab a question or two here real quick as we stop because we're about to pivot. So where do you find the Google sheet of this course? Okay. So let me go ahead and drop the info here. We've got some different things. I'm going to drop it in chat right now that has several different things in it that are resources. I will drop it again at the end of the class. Email list is your gold currency. It's 100% true. That's completely correct, Kyle. E email is your gold currency. And yes, I apologize. I meant to put system under this, um, Rod. The CRM is system.io. It doesn't have to be. There's not a wrong answer here. If you have a CRM that you have used in the past that you already have set up, um, you know, go with it. If, you, if you're comfortable with using a CRM, then, then we're teaching the concept here. If you are new to CRM, then yes, yeah, system.io is what I would recommend because we found great success with them. A lot of people have had great success and, um, and they work and they have a free option and they're easy to use, right? So do you use freebies? Um, you can, you can totally use freebies. That's getting into like a, what we'd call a lead magnet where you basically you offer them something. Right now, what you're offering them is, um, you know, a promise, like a hope and a prayer kind of promise thing. Uh, where we're saying, hey, if you give us this, we'll give you some information, right? If, if you're selling like the Chat Riches course, like when we sell this course, we offer a promise that we're going to teach you something. That's the offer to get into a landing page. When we do the scary toolbots, we offer the checklist. That's your lead magnet. So it's a list of all of the different websites that you can be an affiliate program at. You can offer free things. You can offer a report that you write. You can offer a something that you find on the internet that's free, whatever you want. Um, is it one email per product? offer magnus so um again i'm just answering a couple questions because we're going to pivot here the i'm not sure if i understand the question but i think you're answering if you send one email and the answer is no it's more than one because you don't want to start 83 products and try to sell 83 products at once you got to start with one and then you can add two and then three and four right but uh, most people buy after they see something seven times. And especially if you're going to go in there and try to start building an audience where you're like, hey, this is Magnus. You know, maybe you send the first emails like, this is my story kind of thing. You're building trust, right? Because people have to trust you. And then you're going to send them at least seven emails on a product because people buy on average after they see something seven times. But to get to that average, you have to have like a one and a 14, right? Um, and so I don't want to go into math, but basically, you know, and maybe even more than 14, it depends on the offer, right? If it's a $7 product and it's kind of like an intro thing and you're walking them up a, what's called a value ladder, then, you know, they're going to buy pretty fast or they're not going to buy. If it's a $700 product, that's different. If it's a $7,000 product, it's going to take even longer. The big problem is getting the emails right. So, um, right. So we're going to talk about that. Basically, part of that is... Um, Part of that is the video, part of it is optimization, and part of it is just a numbers game. How many accounts do you typically run on different accounts? Run to run all the different accounts. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question, Todd. It, it tend to stick with, so you, we have, we are currently developing like 10 different YouTube accounts, 10 different TikTok accounts, because we're leveling up, but I would like start with one TikTok, one YouTube, one Instagram, and one Facebook. Um, is there a way to remove where it says squeeze page on the landing page I created on system.io? Uh, yeah, you can change that in the landing page builder. Uh, we're not going to cover that today, but if you go in the help section um, or we'll cover it in a different class, that's the title of the page. And on the landing page builder, you can do that. All right. So, all right. So I don't want to get too far off course here. The scary tool page landing page is not necessary to sell the course, correct? Yeah, no, you don't need the that page at all. That's a page for your reference. It has a bunch of affiliate offers. So, so what is that? Well, talking about what to sell, how many people in here, can we give me in chat? Cause I, we need to transition here to the next part of this so we can keep moving. Um, hit me in chat if you know what you wanna sell. Like, um, you know, like you're 100% for sure that you know exactly what you wanna sell if you do. And if you don't, go ahead and give me a two in chat or a no that you don't know what you wanna sell. So I can get an idea of where we are. 
Okay, so maybe 50-50 here. We've got some people on the fence, 1.5s. Okay, awesome. You want to sell the products from your hair company? All right, awesome. You want to start with one affiliate offer first and expand? Okay, perfect. Um, I think, is it Mayar? I apologize if I pronounced the name wrong. The concept that they said right there is really important to start with one thing and then expand. As we move into this next part, I just want to reiterate that, that um, if you aim at 82 targets at once, you're once you're not really aiming at anything. So you want to start with just one and move on. So, all right. So lastly, as we talk about this, this is what we're going to talk about next. So this is kind of like the flow. You see the arrow. Obviously, you know, this seems backwards, right? Because the chart actually points you in the other direction. We have to have traffic first, which is true in order to make sales and money. But in order to have traffic, we have to send them somewhere, right? Which is why we talked about landing pages last week. And then once we have the landing page, we need to send them an email, right? And then the email has to point to something. So in order, if you already know what you're doing, you know, you can jump in and do your thing. When I build a system, like when I go in and build something, if I'm picking an affiliate offer, like I'm picking, you know, this course or Jasper or name it, it doesn't matter. Or you're selling your hair products. It doesn't matter, right? If you're going to go in there, I build it from this side backwards, right? So I start over here. If you need a list of affiliate products, you can go to scarytoolbots.com. That's a checklist we put together that has like probably a couple of hundred different places that have affiliate products that you can sell that we know of that are, you know, good offers that we've either made money with or that seem reputable or that we found along the way. Um, you can of course look in the replay sheet, which I dropped in the chat and sell any of our courses, like this course, the chat riches, short form riches course. You can sell the previous courses. There's an AI profits kind of textbook course. There's a bunch of SEO courses. You can sell any of that. You can also sell your own products. And I put services here, but that really just means your own kind of stuff. Now you could, you could white label. Uh, which just means you basically sell it like it's your company, but somebody else does the work. You could outsource, which means that you have your own company, but you're paying different people, maybe Fiverr, Upwork, or somebody that you hire or whatever to do the work for you. Or you could actually do it. Like if I run an SEO company, like I know there are people in here I've seen that have an SEO company or they have, a, you know, like you said, you want to sell your hair products, that sort of stuff. This is your stuff. So services really actually is services slash your products. Right. So we got to pick the product first. Once we have the product, now we need to go into our CRM, which is system, do make a landing page and get a cup, at least one or two emails in there to get started. So that when someone goes to the landing page, enters their email address, then they get an email from there. And then how do we get the traffic? Then we go back over here and we start making videos and testing different methods and, and building a channel and that sort of stuff. So does this flow process make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, sweet. All right. I got to love the big hand. All right. Um, just keep it simple by focusing on selling chat. That's fine. You can do that. Um, keeping it simple is super, super key here. Um, yeah. So we, we've got to keep it simple and that's super duper important. So as we go into this next part, keeping it simple is, is like the key. If you overcomplicate things, then it's not going to work out for you or the customer, right? So what should you sell? Well, let's talk about this for a few minutes here because I had a whole bunch of people that don't know what to sell. Um, and I want to give you some clarity. And to be honest, this is one of the most common questions I get when I get on coaching calls. And I've talked to, like I just had a call with Alex yesterday who's done calls. And Alex is here on the call with us today. He's going to be teaching on Thursday. And when he's done calls, we get the same question, right? Because some people know exactly what they want to sell. Like you want to sell your hair products or you want to sell your SEO company services. Some people don't know what they want to sell and that's okay. But we need to consider a couple of things as we figure out what it is that we want to sell. So let's look at this. All right. So I'm not going to read all of this, but basically the concept here is we're going to, I'm going to talk about what to sell and how to sell it. Products and timelines, which kind of help you pick what to sell. And then what's the key for all of this? And then, you know, we'll kind of go into the question and answer at the end of the class here. So stick with me here. So what are you going to sell? That kind of depends on, for those of you who don't know what you're going to sell, it kind of depends on your goals and your tolerance and your time. If your goal is to make money, like, like you need money today, then that's selling one thing versus if you are, you know, you're in a stable job or you have some stable online stuff going on and just going to kind of build and add over time, that is a whole different story altogether. So basically 
um, you, you have your tolerances, you know, what are you willing to do? And what are you willing not to do? Are you willing to, you know, work seven days a week? Are you willing to work one day a week? Can you work seven days a week? Can you work one day a week? How much time and money do you have to put into this? You know, how fast do you want to make it? You know, probably if you want to make money within the first 60 days and you make any kind of decent amount of money, like you need to go right now, services is your best option. The meaning services means your own products, services, selling SEO, selling your hair products, something like that because that's going to be a faster route because you're going to get on the phone with people and you're just going to sell. Um, if you want a longer play that's more scalable, then you probably want affiliates. That's kind of like the nutshell of things, but you kind of got to look at what assets do you have too. So let's look at that. How do you make money in the fastest way possible? It is probably the number one question I get, and that is services. And by services, again, um, I, I will retitle this later. Uh, services is really services, your own products, right? If you have your own products. So what does that mean? Well, you can sell SEO, for example. You could you could either, like Chase has courses here that you could get, you can go um, and you can white label things and you know you can also outsource. You can go to Fiverr and look for ideas of things you can sell. But there's three main categories in business. There's sales and marketing. So if you take any business and divide it up, there's sales and marketing. And there is the deliverable and then there's administration, right? So in the deliverable, that is, okay, if you bake cakes, the cake is the deliverable, right? The, and who, if, um, if we can mute ourselves too, that would be great because there's some background noise going on in here. Um, the deliverable, if you are baking cakes, is the cake, right? And then if you are baking cakes, your sales and marketing is, okay, I've got to put signs out in the front door, signs out in the window. I've got to put flyers out. I got to advertise. I got to give out free samples, right? That's sales and marketing. And then the administration is, okay, I've got to pay the people that work here. I've got to pay the electric bill. I've got to pay that sort of stuff. You can sell products and services and affiliate stuff in all of those categories. So whether you want to sell to a business and help them with their deliverable, right? If you, if you are selling hair supplies, right? You might be selling hair supplies to a salon and that's the salon is their deliverable, right? So they need the hair products or if you are selling to a salon, you could give them sales and marketing services, or you could sell to a salon and help them by getting them health insurance for their employees or employee programs, or you know, just taking over uh, some of their bill paying, CPA stuff, all that kind of stuff as administration. So that's kind of services. And how do you sell it? Again, this is kind of focusing on the fastest way to make money, or if you wanna make money um, selling services, getting on the phone is like your ticket. So if you can get people on the phone, and you can maybe not, okay, so maybe not with like hair products. It depends, right? If you're trying to sell hair products to a salon, you're going to have to get on the phone and make a deal with them. If you're just trying to sell somebody a bottle of detangler or shampoo, and I don't know what all these terms are, right? Uh, I'm still learning. I have a six-year-old daughter. So forgive me if I'm saying the wrong terminology in the hair department or the hair products department. But um if you want to sell like a bottle, then that's going to be like through a website and you're just, you know, you're, that's contactless. You're not going to probably talk to the person except for maybe through uh, like email for customer service kind of thing. But if you want to sell like a thousand dollar a month reoccurring SEO service, or if you want to, you know, fix someone's website, or you want to do something digital, or you even want to do something local, you're going to get on the phone with them and say, Hey, listen, these are the reasons why you should work with me. You know, let me do something for free, whatever it is that you have to do to get started. Um, you can also use text messaging, you can make a landing page again for physical products or if it's smaller dollar things. And then of course you can reply through email. And so here's, here's the ticket, right? And I don't wanna take forever on this slide, but this is about dollars. If you are trying to sell something really expensive, the more expensive it is that you wanna sell, the longer it takes to sell. And this is true on affiliates. This is true on services. This is true on products. If I want to sell you a, so I sold a, um, it's been years ago, but I sold like a $30,000 skid steer loader, which might be like a $40,000, $50,000 machine now, which is kind of like a super giant bobcat. If you want to think about like a dozer, a small, it's just like a small dozer backhoe combination, does a bunch of different things. It's got a forklift uh, and that sort of stuff, right? So that was a whole lot more work to sell this for this guy that I was working with, right? Than it is. When I'm selling, you know, if I'm selling, um, you know, a $25 bottle of a hair product, right? I don't even know if that's a realistic number for hair product, but you get the point here, right? Because it's all about risk versus reward. When you go to the store and you look at something, 
and you're like, all right, sweet, you know, what hair product am I buy? You're going to spend some time on it, but you're not going to like antagonize over it. If you're going to go buy an 80 inch 4K TV, that's $2,000. Again, I have no idea how much that costs. Um, you're going to spend, probably you're going to spend a couple more minutes looking at it, thinking about it and that sort of stuff. So, so goes when you sell stuff to people and the, the magic number is probably in the 500 to 700 area. I've sold products like that faceless are like not contacting them. But if you're going over $500, $700, you're probably going to have to get on the phone or at least text message people, maybe set up a meeting uh, and that sort of stuff. So maybe that gives some, some credence there, some focus. Um, let me look at here in chat to make sure. Uh, surprised you knew about Detangler. Oh, Detangler is awesome. Um, so uh, give me in chat, uh, have a lost, give me in chat, like two if you're on the fence, right? I want to make sure that we're not totally lost here. And if you're not on the fence, then, um, you know, give me a one that everything's cool. All right. So everything seems to be making sense to most people. And listen, if it doesn't make sense, it's okay. Um, and also if you need to watch the replay, sometimes I talk really fast. And so I would like to acknowledge that it is okay for each person to learn in their own way. So there are some videos that I watch when I'm learning things because I like to learn via video. It seems to be faster than reading, although sometimes that's necessary um, or audio either, either way that I will turn it up to like 1.5 speed because I just, I can't learn that slow on that topic because I know some about it or like, it's just a topic that I'm like, I'm just looking for like a couple pieces in there. Um, so I cranked it up. Sometimes I have to pause the video and think about it two or three times along the way. And it is okay to learn however it is that you learn. So if you need to rewatch this, that's great. If I'm going too slow for you, um, I guess you can log off and watch the replay and crank up the speed because uh, I can't really go too fast. So anyways, that's all right. That's kind of affiliates or the services products things. If you want to go into affiliates, there's some pros and cons as well. You don't have a deliverable in affiliates, which is really great. And if you are um, uncertain of what to sell, uh, or you're new starting out in business and you're not wanting to do this because it's important to understand that there are three categories of business. Again, sales and marketing, deliverables, and administration. If you're new starting out in business, these aren't really going to feel like much, but as you kind of scale up, you're going to have to deal with all of these three things as well. So if you choose the affiliate route, that kind of eliminates a lot of the administration, a lot of the deliverables, and basically just turns you into sales and marketing where you're making videos, you're collecting leads, and you're selling stuff, and you don't have to worry about customer service. You don't have to worry about delivering the product. You don't have to worry about when the product breaks. You don't have to worry about refunds. You don't have to worry about chargebacks. You don't have to worry about fraud. You don't have to worry about all of this stuff because it's all stuff. Like I've been on both sides of the table. I've had companies that I've run and owned where, you know, I have the product and then I've jumped in deep into affiliate space and um, the affiliate's less stressful by far. And it scales because you could sell 10,000 products in a week and you don't have to worry about any of it, but it takes longer to get it going because you have to build the pipeline. You have to build the leads. Uh, and, you know, if you're selling a $500 product, like the course on average, you have to get about 500 to a thousand leads because it's 50 cents to a dollar for every one of those, if that makes sense. So you might need 500 to 1,000 leads to make one sale. Whereas, you know, so that's a lot. Whereas if you get on the phone with somebody and sell them a $1,000 reoccurring SEO service each month, you only need one, you know, one customer to make $1,000 a month. But again, you know, that's kind of like, you can pick whatever it is that you want to do, depends on where you're at. And, and listen, if you start in one and it doesn't work, then you can always go to the other. It's not like this is the end all be all, right? So services is the fastest way to make money, but services require that you do the work. Affiliates is a fast way to make money, but it's not as fast, but it does scale more because you don't have to deliver the manage the product. Um, you also have to decide if you're tolerant with getting on the phone. So if you want to be willing to do SMS and you don't have to use your cell phone, you could get like a Skype phone number or whatever, right? But if you're going to talk to people on the phone, some people are really cool with that and they want to go all in. I've talked to those people and some people are like, I do not want to talk to anybody. That's okay too. But that's that's like affiliate stuff or working with somebody else that does the services and you being affiliate of their products. And right, so some people say services first, then affiliate. That's the strategy. What strategy was that? What? Wow, is what Alan says. Yeah, and that's fine too, right? So I'm not saying you can't do both, right? You can still do both. You just can't do both. Like don't start and try to, like some people can handle this and that's okay. Like if you're all in and, and you want to go at it, 
go for it. But if you are, especially if you're uncertain, I would not try to sell three affiliate products over here, plus sell the courses that like this course here, plus go over here and start an SEO agency, plus go over here and do this over here all at the same time, right? Because you'll go crazy. Trust me. You just go crazy. Pick one thing, focus on it, and then you can move to the next thing and you can scale up. All right. So um, there's two main keys with this as we go through here. And I'm just checking out chat to um, how would you set up a phone number for international calls? I would do something like an online phone, like Skype is at an example. It's what I have used, but there's probably like a thousand different online phone companies out there. Um, can you program system IO to automatically send out the swipe emails for all products one after the other? Yes. Um, that is something that we're, you can definitely do that, Rod. We're going to talk about that in, in future weeks here. And, um, Right. Okay. So taking action is the biggest thing, right? I realize that some of you haven't probably taken action. I know for a fact that some of you haven't taken action. Stats say so. Uh, I would love to be wrong on that, but stats say some of you haven't taken action yet in this course. We're only like, this is only lesson four. I get it. We, we aren't even at two weeks yet and that's okay. But now is the time to take action. Even if that action is figuring out what to sell or thinking through, maybe watch this replay again, thinking through, do I want to be on the phone? Do I not want to be on the phone? Do I want to sell affiliate products? You know, what is my plan? How fast do I need money? How much tolerance do I have on this? Right? Because like I spent almost a decade working at at and and they own my life. I would go to work. My kids would be asleep. I'd come home. My kids would be asleep. And um, I wanted to get out of there, but it took a lot of years because I was trying to figure stuff out. There was no like courses like this that I know of at the time. Um, and there was maybe there was right. And there was no necessarily plans. And I didn't understand uh, what a CRM was at that point. I had no clue. And um, I didn't understand, you know, how to utilize an email address list and how to promote and sell and that sort of stuff. So it takes some time. Give yourself some time to do things. And that's OK. But you do need to take action because I can tell you for a fact that if you don't take step one, you're not going to take step two. And so I would encourage you today and between now and Thursday and this week to take some action and, you know, write down what action steps you're going to take. And I would also encourage you to do one thing and not 10, because we want to do like the magnifying glass here with this kind of a cheesy picture. But I think you get the point here. And that is we want to put all of our focus on like one thing. If you are experienced in business, you already understand what I'm talking about today. Maybe you already logged off because this is old hat for you then you can go ahead and do whatever works for you. But if you are trying to figure it out or starting or even scaling, like I would pick one thing and focus on that because like I said, if you're aiming at 10 different things, you're not really aiming at anything and you're just running around. Um, can you get a checklist for the steps we need to take for the CRM and selling a product? So uh, the checklist is pretty basic. I mean, we're going to cover this and we might build a, a checklist here as we go, but the checklist is fairly straightforward in the CRM. We just need to build a landing page. We need to build. So again, start with one product, right? We're talking about this right here. Start with one product. Let's say you're selling this course. I'm just going to pick it because everybody understands this course, right? Because we're all in it. So say you're selling this course, you pick this course. So now I build a landing page for the course. That part's done. I build an email sequence, at least seven. You know, I personally would do 14 days worth and you could, you know, you could choose whether you want to send more than one a day, but start basic, right? And build seven to 14 days of emails, right? And then there's an automation hook that connects the landing page to the thing. So those are the three steps in system. And once you have that, then it just works. I, other than system has a setup, right? You have to go into the settings and set some stuff up, which we will also talk about, but it's beyond the scope of talking about it today. If you want to get ahead, you can go into the help section in system and look at that, but um, we will talk about it here as we go forward. So, all right. So again, taking action, and I would like to stress the action part. And I know like Eli had said on the first class that I'm going to beat it like constantly. And I am because that is the, it's the lever, right? If you don't take action, you're not going to get anywhere because you're just going to stay exactly where you are. And it is just something that I have struggled with in my own life. So I know how hard it is sometimes to take action because you get busy, life happens, you have a significant other, you have kids, a lot of you have jobs already, or you have a lot of other things going on, or there are problems and challenges in your life, right? You will all have those. Um, and so, and then there are unforeseen things that come into life. And so it's very easy to not take action 
And some of it's legitimate, right? If you're just busy or life happens or whatever, I get it, right? Because life happens, but you, you've got it. If you want to move forward on this, you still have to take action. So progress, not perfection is the key. Like avoiding analysis paralysis. This is my big hang up. Don't spend too long just getting stuck on something because you can always pivot later. And we're still at the early stages. We're not running a hundred million dollar company here. And we have to like really make a solid strategy. We're trying to earn the first dollar, the first thousand dollars or whatever it is, right? Or, or add two more customers to your existing business. So just take some action and move forward. Again, what if you make the wrong choice? It's okay because version one is better than version none. And that is something that, again, I have struggled with my own life because I get all caught up in tweaking the landing page because I love to build systems. So I'll go in and mess with the landing page and everything's got to be perfect and the font's got to be just right. And those are good things, right? And then I'll go in here and I'll do the emails and, oh, maybe I should change that letter. Should I reword this? And like eight different times. And, and what happens is you spend all this time like you're taking action, but you have to, to be weary of not taking the wrong action too, right? Because there's a difference between taking action on things that move the needle and being busy. And being busy doesn't make us any money. Moving the needle makes money. So take some action, take a step back, look at what you did. Is this the right thing? And then take some more action. And that's part of the classes here. If you like, you just show up, we're going to kind of guide you through a lot of the things and you'll be able to see. Also, we have the Facebook group. Um, yeah. So Kyle says, what's your action step for today? Right. So decide today, like, like literally right now on the class, the best time to do it is like right now, like pause for a second, get up. It's okay. Get up, get a piece of paper and think for a second and ignore me for just a second and write down like one thing that you can do to take action. Right. So somebody says they're going to make five videos after class. Awesome. Make five videos. That's amazing. Alejandro make five videos and committing to something is absolutely key. All right. So like I said, I'm going to beat it. Um, and here I am going to say, and I'm going to be a little rough here. So if you look at this bottom thing, if you don't take action, will you succeed? Probably not. I know it's harsh, but it's true. I'm trying to light a fire you under you here. If you don't take action today, and then you don't take action on Thursday, and then you don't take action next week, and you don't take action the next week, I realize that life happens. But if you just don't take action and we get to the end of the course and you don't take action, you're not going to get anywhere right? Which is, we're just not going to get there. So we do have the giveaway here in a few minutes. And um, in the meantime here, let's, let me stop sharing this screen. And if you have any questions about this, go ahead and raise your hand. I will answer questions in chat, but we give priority to anybody that raises their hands and wants to talk. And then if we, in order to make room for everybody, um, if we can keep it to one question, that would be great. And then if you have a second question and we don't have anything going on in chat or anybody raising their hand, then we can come back. But go ahead and raise your hand if anybody has anything. Hang on. I don't. OK, I got a bunch of people raising their hand. All right. So, again, I go in order of how this uh, Zoom sets it up for here. I'm not sure who actually raised their hand first. But Rod, go ahead. What's your question? What you got? Uh, my question is, uh, hi, Ryan. Do, do we ask uh, yes, chat GPT to write the swipe emails that we need for the products that we choose from a scary toolbox? Sure, you can. So there's two parts to that. Part one is um, with a scary toolbox, a lot, not all, but um, a lot of those affiliates are going to give you swipe files. They have already tested and figure out for their product what, what makes people pull the lever and convert. And so you can use their swipe files. You could take their swipe files and, you know, modify them a little bit to kind of make them yours. You could ask ChatGPT to write them. You could even take their swipe files, throw them into ChatGPT and say, all right, here's seven days of emails that I already have. Write me a seven day email sequence that basically says this, but in a little different words. So that it comes across a little bit different for various reasons. So anything, it, you know, again, just sending, you know, getting started is the key there, but either one works. Last question, I promise. Do, do you have a video that's, that teaches us the, uh, how to do those stuff at system.io, like how to do the landing page and program the emails? So we will have videos in this class as we go, as we go on through the weeks here. The last Thursday, trying to remember my days here, last Thursday, we covered landing pages some. And so that is, um, you know, it kind of walks through how to build the landing page. And then there's the automation tab on that same landing page builder. And then the email part is um, a little bit 
it's different. So I don't have any videos yet, but we're going to have them as we go through the classes, but there is a help section in system.io. So if you want to work ahead, you can go in there and, you know, you can ask also, you can email the support there. They're really great. I have emailed them to ask them questions when I was trying to teach something in a class. And I was like, I want to make sure I say the right thing here. You know, how's this work? And they gave me resources and that sort of stuff. So that's okay, where we're at. It's coming, but you bet. Right, Todd, thanks. go ahead. What you got for us? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to expand a little bit on a question I typed earlier. I, my question was, how many accounts do you typically run to run all the different accounts? And I guess I didn't ask it maybe to a point where you could understand, but what I'm trying to figure out is, so if I'm running an affiliate product, if I'm running uh, a servicing product, or just over a period of time, you know, different Gmail accounts, uh, setting up different... Uh, you know, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. How often do you run through different accounts? I, I did affiliate marketing a while ago when Facebook and you know, and we had to go in and do all the proxies and run it off of the cell phones and create all these different accounts. And I just I ended up getting out of it and I'm kind of stepping back into it. So my mindset is that of like having to have multiple accounts for things. Can can you expand a little bit on on how to maybe make it easier or what your suggestion would be, or like once you get banned on an account, do you jump over to another account, create another Google account or Yahoo account or something like that? Um, I mean, if you get banned, I mean, definitely jump over and create a new one, but I don't, I don't think you're going to have that same issue with the stuff that we're teaching in here. Now, when we get into, when you get into more quote unquote guerrilla tactics or um, direct marketing or, uh, paid advertisements, that sort of stuff. You might have some of that. I'm not sure that you'd have that in paid ads, but um, for the most part here, your biggest challenge is going to be if you happen to get an account banned and that's most probably going to happen on TikTok unless you just go crazy and violate the terms on other accounts. On the social side, like making the videos and stuff, um, as long as you stay within the terms and stuff like that, as a general rule, um, I have never lost an account that I stayed in the terms. If I have, if I'm testing edgy things or making wild, crazy stuff, like I like to push the buttons and see where the limits are, right? You know, I get stuff banned. TikTok is really hard, especially in this space. The key that we found most recently is keeping your face in the video, for example, right? which we talked about last Tuesday. Um, but as long as you kind of play the game there and do the right stuff to stay within the terms and not violate the terms and, you know, stay with what's working as a general rule, it's generally pretty safe, but you could create extra, you know, you got to start with one. So I'd start with one TikTok, one YouTube, one Facebook, one Instagram, assuming you're doing those. And then once you start to get established and get going and you, you're making some headway, maybe start a second one as a backup and you can start building that. But um, I wouldn't like expect to get, and even if you lose one account, that is terrible. And I hate losing accounts, but I wouldn't expect it to be a common thing. And with the CRM, it's just going to be there. Like you, you know, you're going to set up an email in the CRM and you shouldn't really lose that email or get banned because we're not, because it's sending through whitelisted servers and whitelisted IP addresses and right. it should be pretty straightforward. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it, 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 it does. It does. Like I said, you know, we, we had to have multiple accounts. So um, I'm, I'm obviously not going to put it on the main account that I use my, for my personal business. I'm going to create a separate account to sure. do that. And I think maybe that's the, the, the question that I'm looking forward and moving forward. If something happens on those accounts, then like you're saying, just build a second account to go to go forward from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the same thing would be a, true if you scale out products. So like if I'm building an account selling hair products, like um, someone said in here, and then I also want to go over here and sell SEO, I'm probably not going to like put those videos on the same, you know what I mean? I'm not going to build like a, a YouTube account that sells SEO and hair products at the same time. Right. Um, you know, there's some broadness with inside of a niche, but um, yeah, so I, I don't think you'll run into a lot of the same challenges you did with what you're talking about, but you know, you could get an account banned on social. It does happen. So just, just as an example, if you, if you had a ClickBank, if you were, if you were selling products off of ClickBank, right, as an affiliate mm -hmm. marketer sure. and you were selling, let's say you were selling a weight loss and let's just say you were selling a, a hair regeneration tonic, right? Two, two different okay. things, two different niches. Do you have to have two different, would you recommend two different accounts or could you just, you think you could keep it on the same account? On the social side, um, you might, it's kind of iffy because if you're going, you know, if you, it depends on what your account is. If your account is like personal products or you can kind of make this broad thing, then you can kind of connect it together. Um, especially if it's, if it's B2C, 
if it's all B2C products, you could possibly get all that connected together. But, um, you know, you could run multiple products inside like the CRM like system without any issues. And you can just tag the users and, and send each one separate. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. the CRM. I was more worried or more interested about the, the, the social aspect. If you if you pick three different products to sell in three different categories, you want three different profile social profiles, basically. Is that my understanding? Well, it could be. It, it depends on how you lump them together. So I do need to move on. But um, yeah, no, no, thank the, you. Short, the short answer is, um, you know, if they're close enough related, like if it's all personal care products, you know, like weight loss and hair products and um, stuff like that, you could possibly get all of that under the same category. You can't get totally random stuff like, you know, um, I'm selling CPA services and hair products in the same category because it doesn't make sense, right? So if you can make it make sense, then it's probably fine. But but look, the algorithms change on social all the time. So what's true today might not be true in six months. So some of it is kind of like a, this evolving experiment, but we stay on top of that too. Um, and I will, uh, if I run into some specific information about that, I will drop it into classes as we run our tests. All right, thanks, Ryan. I appreciate your time. You bet, Todd. Rainer. Hey, Ryan. what's up? Oh, hang on. Hang on. I, I hit the button. It's my fault. I hit the mute button. I was trying to click to unmute and you unmuted at the same time. It's my fault. I apologize. If you can unmute again. Can you hear me now? I can. I can. Sorry. Perfect. I'm really excited to be here. Just a quick, super quick question. I want to start this whole thing by selling your course first to learn the way to learn everything. I've already created the swipe files. I've already set up the landing page and system IO. Now I'm just a bit con confused because I saw the video from Chase, not you once, where he, in the same short video, short form video, he talks about, he leads yeah. people to the two landing pages. One is the scary toolkit, uh, tool thing, and these, the course. Why do you have them? What's the strategy that you have them both? Could I start just start with selling the course? I know you mentioned super quickly before, yes, in, in forgetting the scary toolbox completely at the beginning, or would that be useful to have both ready? Because the scary toolbox, unfortunately, it's a, it's a lot of work because you have to create all the affiliate links first. Could I jump into just one and forget the scary toolbox at the beginning? Or would that be recommending to have two landing pages like uh, Chase has them in the video? Yeah, so um, definitely you can start with one. And I would even recommend that you start with one because, again, that's kind of version one is better than version none thing and taking action. So I would recommend start with one. The reason we do two is because one might appeal to somebody and not to somebody else and vice versa. So, but we can capture a lead either way. So anytime you can kind of double dip kind of thing um, and throw in a second one, that's a great thing to do. So if you can do that down the road and it makes sense, you know, go with it. But for the start, yeah, I would just start do one because you can always go back and, you know, and the, so if we do 20, 30, I doesn't have many videos, right? And we're however many months down the road, then we can start doing videos and putting in a second one. But we otherwise, if we spend too much time trying to get everything ready, then we just exactly. lose all that time. 100%. That's the whole problem. That will be my problem to create the second one properly would take me again a long time. So I could just start with one and then f ignore completely the scary toolbox <laughs> list and just... Yes try on my videos for that okay and then just out of curiosity since you're using two landing pages do you use the same swipe files do you put them into one or do you send two different contents if you have two landing pages to the same person and assuming the person would put their email in both bloody landing pages would you send right. them <laughs> oh, it's crazy but it's yeah already... would you send the same email or just once because i think it's a statement i'm not sure if you have two landing pages whether they would send the email twice or they would recognize if you link the same uh campaign how they're calling it if you link the same campaign to two different landing pages where they would and people would fill in two twice their email address where they actually would send them twice or the system will recognize yeah. them send it out once so that is a great question i do not know the answer for sure on system it is something that i can ask them um but um i'm just making just typing here set so no it's not essential uh, but your advice is no, good no. i can start with just one thing and forget the scary box at the beginning i wanted to hear this because otherwise it's too much work at the beginning i just want to get up and running as you say per, version one is better than version zero and i haven't done a single video yet because i wanted to create the system first but i can forget the scary toolbox completely and just concentrate and lead them to you to the affiliate page from you guys and learn my way that way correct 
Correct. And that is not only what you can do, that is what I would advise that you do as well. Get something that totally functions because adding that second one is basically optimizing and you can't optimize what you don't have. So we need to build something that works first and then we optimize by adding more. Perfect. I wanted to hear that. You got it. I needed to hear Awesome. That. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks for bringing that up because I think it's a really great point for everybody else that, um, yeah, totally start, start with one thing. And then, you know, you can build on top of it. We can always build more. It's not, this is not going anywhere. It's not like we have to do all this in like a month or we don't make it right. You know, 2024, 2025 is coming. Um, it's okay. It takes time to do things. So Alan, uh, what you got for us? Hey guys. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Ryan. Great, uh, great recap on all that stuff. The question I have is more on videos. So, you know, right. I create some videos on YouTube. Uh, I know that I can take those videos, I can, you know, crop or cut them into short form content, but those videos right now are not getting any views. So I know that I can do a reaction type of video, which personally I hate, but I'll get over myself. Um, okay. Are, are there other things that I should be doing in terms of uh, videos that have a better chance of driving a lot more traffic so I can actually get them to my affiliate links? So this is, I missed, maybe you said it, maybe you didn't. Are we talking about what platform? Are we talking about like TikTok, YouTube, or all of the above? Or Right, I mean, short form content. So TikTok. Okay, okay. Um, so TikTok is kind of a little different animal, if you want to call it, than maybe some of okay. the, the other ones. Um, and they've been doing some stuff fairly recently with uh, how they change, you know, how they how they distribute stuff. But um, the short, and I definitely would post your shorts on on the other platforms too, just because like we sometimes they get like we had one that got like on the 170 thousand subscriber YouTube got like 3,000 views, and we threw it on Instagram and it got like 700 thousand views, right? Because it's a bit random uh, numbers game. But um, to answer your question, if they're not getting views, then part of it is how how many how many how old is the account how established it's, is it new or <clears throat> it's newer basically doing i have services guys so i'm doing audits okay. uh, so it's basically showing hey here are two chiropractors one is ranking one is not here's why so it's uh, okay. it's getting very little views which is understandable but as i do short form content i'm just trying to see if i use those or i need to take somebody else's and then go with that so trying to figure that out Sure. So um, two things. One, one good thing. Alex is uh, um, an expert on video and he's going to be teaching on two or on Thursday. So um, definitely grab the replay on that because I think we'll probably talk about some stuff that'll help you there, like basic stuff like captions and hashtags and all that sort of stuff and how those apply today because those kind of change. But um, the short answer too is that TikTok used to push um, and again, this is changing all the time, but they used to push stuff out. Like when I first made my first video on the very first account on TikTok that I had, it got like 20,000 views, right? It was just like, um, but I replicated an existing video that had got like millions of views, right? So um, we kind of knew that worked. But um, now they are pushing things out slower. And especially if you have less than a thousand followers from what we found in the testing. Um, and so some of the things that we're doing with testing is like, you know, you can kind of go with it and build that slowly organically, or you could spend a few bucks and buy some ads, which we're not there yet. We're going to talk about that later um, to kind of juice that up. But, but some of it is we have to get the accounts established to okay. a degree in order to, to get that done. Um, and I know some, a tip for you, which is a total sidetrack for everybody who wasn't in fortune bots is that you can play with uh, the contact forms and sending videos to uh, sending people to the videos to, I have done that um, successfully mm -hmm. to help juice stuff up. And 100% planning on doing that, yep. Okay, okay. I figured you would knowing the history there, so. Thank you. You bet. Um, it looks like Benjamin, what you got for us, Benjamin? Hi, uh, new, new to the uh, program, uh, excited to get started. Um, I, I had two quick questions. Uh, one um, for like any of your products, uh, you know, commission is 50% payout, automatic payout after 30 days how long like it'll just automatically pay out after 30 days or like okay you make a sale and you can withdraw in you know a day or two or or what like how yeah. sure so um the way that ours works and the way that a lot of affiliate programs work is there's a you know there's a holding time it's typically 30 days it can vary ours is 30 days so like if if you run some videos today and and Bob comes over here and buys and Sally comes over here and buys, right, then um, 
they buy today and let's say that they buy, I'm gonna give rice, nice round numbers here. They buy something that's 500 bucks, 50% commission. You get 250 bucks. So you got 250 bucks on Sally, 250 bucks from Bob. That's 500 bucks. 30 days from now, it's just going to auto pay. Assuming you have your payment information set up in there, which I believe it won't let you even start promoting until you do. Yeah. Um, but as long as all that's set up, then yeah, it just auto pays and it auto pays. It's a rolling, our stuff is a rolling um, like 30 days from, I think it's like it pays on day 31, but um, okay. after the sale itself. Now, some companies, when you do their affiliate stuff might be, they pay 30 days out, but they only pay on like the first of the month. So if you got, got a you. sale on the 29th, you might, or the, on the second of the month, you might actually have to wait almost 60 days, but each program's terms is a little bit different, but that's about how it works. And some of them will be, you have to go in there and ask for withdrawal. Like I have some affiliate stuff I do where it just sets there for like six months and then I go ask for withdrawal or you know, whatever. I gotcha. Okay. Our stuff's right. automatic. Okay. All right. Um, the, the other question was, um, I, I watched the replay, but is you said uh, some, some of your videos we could, we could use to do reaction where, where would we find those or just look on TikTok under, um, you know, short form riches or what? I, I don't know. Yeah. So you can look at, um, we'll have more coming on that because we just changed to templatizing our videos. Meaning okay. if you go look on the main Chase Reiner channel on YouTube in the past three to five days, some of it we were rolling over. The long form has been the past three days. I think short forms in the past five days um, where we templatize. And I don't want to go too deep into that, but where we don't say the website anymore. We just say, go to this website right here. Rather than saying, go to scarytoolboss.com, we say, go to this website. And we kind of roll the okay. mouse over it, but then you can edit that, download that, edit the video, add some effects, whatever you want to do, throw some okay. music in there, whatever you want to do. And then you can put that in there, but you can also edit older ones. Uh, and that has been successful as well, but um, we're okay. possibly working on making that easier. But yeah, you can just go download them from YouTube, TikTok from our current channels. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks. You bet. And so, um, Shelly, I'm going to go with you here next in just a second. We are getting close here. So we need to do our giveaway. And then I'm going to hang around here. I do want to be respectful of people's time. This is scheduled to end at two o'clock. I'm going to stick around here and try to answer more questions. So if you can stick around, that's great. If you have to go, go for it. But Alex is going to come on here. I think if we're set, Alex, uh, let me know if you need if you need something here and then do the giveaways. And let me talk about that for half a second. The giveaways are a contest that we run each week. And if you go in the Facebook group and you post, so I'm gonna drop, uh, actually, let me put the Facebook group link in here too. You post something about the short form riches and use the hashtag. If you'd use the hashtag, I appreciate it because it makes it easier to uh, track everything because we get an enormous amount of posts on Facebook. Um, so if you use the hashtag here, the short form riches, and you make a post, you can post that you love the classes, you can post something that you would like to see in the classes, you can post, you know, a screenshot or a picture of something that you're doing, taking action, whatever, um, but post in there. And then um, we do a giveaway every Tuesday and give away different things. And you get to choose either whatever we're giving away or a cash, a cash prize, whichever one you want. So Alex, are you on here? Are we good? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Maybe. Yes, I can Hello. hear you. There we go. No, I can hear you. Sorry, I got to play with I got this weird volume control on my on my computer, so I got to play with it sometimes. So I'm excited to be back in here um, and let's get right into this giveaway, guys. So the, we got all the names. If I butcher your name, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm not great at at pronunciation, but we are going to. Have. Linda Soul. I'm sorry if I got that wrong, but um, to claim your prize, just contact support at chasereiner.com and they will uh, get you set up with everything that you need. I do want to add um, Thursday, I will be helping you guys out and making sure we can cover some videos. So if, if you want, drop in the Facebook group, you know what you guys are kind of struggling with so I can kind of tailor the presentation for your guys' needs. Alex, um, actually too, let's go ahead. Uh, let's spin again and give away another one. One more. All right. I hope everybody's pumped. We never do two. Um, David Wilkinson. Winner, hey, winner. David. Sweet. All right. So um, Alex is going to be teaching on uh, 
Thursday. He has taught in previous classes, not in this this course, but in previous courses, but he's going to be around a lot more. And he is a video expert with short form content. Um, he does some long form too, but but short form, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. He is uh, always in the mix right there and has a lot of great wisdom and knowledge and daily experiments. He does even more videos. Um, you know, I do videos every day, but he does like 5x the amount of videos I do. So I'm excited to have you, Alex, and have you back here and lots of great stuff. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to help any way I can. Awesome. Um, all right. So let us jump back here to, so if you have to go, go ahead and, and uh, I realize that everybody has different schedules and busy, busy, and uh, I get it. And then um, for those of you who can stick around, I'm going to answer questions. And then uh, if you have to go and you want to hear the questions, you can grab them on the replay. Shelly, thank you for being patient. Go ahead. What, what do you got for us? Um, so originally I was going to sell um, the teaching that, that you do, but then um, I really want to learn how to do Shine Ranker a bit more to, for my own purposes of SEO. Is there any type of training uh, for Shine Ranker that you guys have? or that Shine Ranker itself has to, um, to be able to go through and do the audits and to um, better help me learn how to utilize it better? Sure. So, right. Okay. Um, I hear you. So there's a lot there. Uh, so it's a bit, comp uh, well, a lot of moving parts, I guess, because the audit's kind of a lot of stuff. So there is some trainings. Um, Shine Ranker just got refreshed with a new design. And I have not played with the training part. I didn't look at it. I don't know if they're in the same spot. I can go look. There is some. Um, you can, if you can't find them, you can email support at chasereiner.com and they can point you directly to where those trainings are. There is also a Shine Ranker YouTube channel where James Jernigan does videos. I think they're daily. I could be wrong. I'm not sure if it's every single day, um, but regular videos on different things of how you can use shine ranker and apply it different ways and i know that that's a growing channel that we started maybe well i think it was started it was there but i think we really started uh growing it this year so there is consistent new content coming there but if you have a specific question as well you can definitely email support at chase .com. but um james if you're here or if somebody rena if you have the link to the uh because i don't have it offhand the link to that Shine Ranker channel. If you can drop it in chat right now, that'd be great. Oh, so um, dropped in a 17 part course on doing audits with Shine Ranker. So there's a link right now in the chat for Shelly for 17 part course. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, okay. Is it, I'm gonna, I have no idea how to say your name, Chris. Is it Mayor? Mayor. How, Mayor. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Mayor. Mayor. What, what you got for us? So quick question for the digital assets that I see on the landing pages, like the million dollar copy and paste chat GPT with the robot on the left hand side on those landing pages. Mm -hmm. Is there anywhere we can download all those assets so I don't have to recreate it myself? Are you talking about like the screenshots of like the proof where you see everybody doing it down below or no. what specific assets? Um, just there. It's basically the opt-in landing page that someone goes to, that that um, image. For example, it says um, there's, a, there's a robot on the left-hand side, and then it says $1 million in red on top, and then it says copy and paste, and then there's a little uh, red arrow pointing to a chat GPT logo. Got it. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, so like at chatriches.com, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, so um, there we... Uh, we change landing pages constantly. So that is one of our, like I make these images every single day and they change and they go in core in correspondence with the daily long form video that I make and the image on the uh, sales page gets updated. So everything's congruent, but like a lot of these, this one may not, there's a different landing page that I'm currently working on that I change like every single day. So um, it, there's not a wrong answer there. We change them because we test like, every single day nonstop, but you can just right click on it and download it. But no, there's, there is not a repository of that at this moment. However, I started with, um, well, actually I didn't do it. I can't take credit for it. Rena, who is always in here and we appreciate you, Rena, running everything in the background that no one sees. Um, and maybe some people don't even know she's here, uh, but we do appreciate you, Rena. Uh, she is building a repository of some stuff and we are starting to streamline 
uh, some of those assets as we templatize the videos. I believe we're going to do those. Don't quote me because we're still figuring this process out. I, was, I have this big spreadsheet that I was color coding yesterday, um, but I would like to be able to make more repositories. So the proof screenshots like, hey, this is working. So-and-so made some money. Hey, this is amazing classes. So proof screenshots, also uh, the templatized videos, also other things that we can use. We're building some repositories right now, but we literally started that yesterday. Um, but once we have those uh, built out and things are there, what's available to use, we will have those linked in the in the sheet. So it's coming, um, but right now I don't have anything. Okay, cool. Are you using uh, Jasper Art or any art uh, AI tool to create these? I, uh, I use MidJourney every day. Everything you see in the, um, it, it's not a wrong answer. I've tried Dolly. I haven't tried Jasper Art. Um, but I found MidJourney and I really liked it. And uh, it has successfully and consistently given me everything I I wanted. So I stuck with Mid Journey, and we'll have a I'll show that at some class here at some point. But um, I love it. You know, I do uh, everything from bedtime stories for my kids, which I have not showed here in this class. Uh, but we'll look at one of those at some point just to show what you can do. And then I do the YouTube thumbnails, and then um, when my wife's feeling well, she likes to write uh, like books and little pamphlets and stuff like that. It's, it's her art, creative artist, and she does that as well. So you can do like a million things with AI art, but that's what I use, but that's not a wrong answer. Whatever works. Right on. Thank you. You bet. Jamil, is it Jamil, right? Awesome. Go ahead. Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, just a quick question, and I don't necessarily know if uh, you just answered this, but uh, are there going to be any swipe emails for the chat for Riches course? That's the first question um, that we can use to, you know, kind of promote that in the CRM. And then also, um, what about, do we have the, the go ahead to create our own ads? I noticed that there weren't any like ad resources in the uh, Thrive Card affiliate portal. So do we have our permission to like create our own versions of short form riches ads or stuff like that to run on display or that's not something that's currently allowed right now so answering the first question if there is um oh, my brain just decided it was going on lunch um the the emails yeah yeah the emails right so um we don't have for for the short form riches I could be wrong. Uh, I think Rena said she was working on that yesterday and they may be done. Um, they may not be done. I don't have a link for them at this exact moment, but I will put them, we'll put them available somewhere, probably in the replay sheet once we have them. Um, if they're not there, I will make some. Um, okay, Chase says we have them. So yeah, we already have those. So we will get those linked somewhere. Um, if you can't find them, you can email support at chaserena.com okay. to answer the ad question. So um, ultimately, I would want to double check with Chase, especially if there's something edgy. But as a general rule, we let you use our content. Like you can use our videos. You can use the images that you see on the landing pages. You can use the text and stuff like that. As long as you're not um, being de you know, derogatory with stuff, which you're not going to do anyway, because you're not going to make any money, then um, I believe that you would have permission to do that. If you have a specific question, though, if you're like, I'm not sure, you can email support at chasereiner.com and we can double check the clarification there. But as a general rule, um, the point of this is, is that we're trying to really double down, hence the repositories that are coming and the fact that you can, we templatize the videos this week and everything to try to give you as much resources as possible to make it as simple as possible for you to go out there and promote stuff and get paid. Gotcha. Yeah, so let me jump in here. So basically what we're doing is we're working on building out a bunch of videos that everybody can use. So we have Alex doing five videos a day on YouTube. We have James doing five videos a day on YouTube around Shine Ranker. Um, we're working on getting more influencers. We have the swipe files. I'm not sure if they're uploaded yet. We already have like, I think a sequence of 10 emails that go out that I believe Rena was adding into the spreadsheet, the affiliate spreadsheet. I'm not sure if it's there yet or not, but like Ryan's saying right now, we're just focusing on building out a bunch of resources that everybody can use. So we can all kind of win together if you want to sell our products, obviously. But um, part of that is we have to build all of the templates and we have to basically have the different influencers we're working with build out things that are working that we can use. Right. I understand. I understand perfectly. 
All right, awesome. Yeah, so basically uh, some stuff is available and more is coming. Okay, and one more thing. Um, I noticed that in the, uh, the replay sheet where the swipe files are, the AI profits email swipe file is the same one as the Shine Ranker course. Um, I don't know if that was er an error or intentional. Is it different content or is it the, the same thing? It's going to change that. Um, I'm going to assume that that is an error, but I will have to go look after class. Yeah, it's an, it's an error. It accidentally got double linked. Okay. All right. That's it. Thanks, awesome. guys. Thanks, Jamil. Scott and everyone else, thank you. We got looks, looks like I'm gonna, we're going to do Scott and then Florian and Magnus, and then uh, we'll be done here. But um, Scott, thanks for being patient. What you got for us? Oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I can. Awesome. All right. What's up? <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you. I just had a quick question in regards to TikTok. In regards to it being a personal or a business account, um, I know if you okay. want to put a link in, they want you to have a business account. And from what I see, I don't know. Um, so, uh, Alex, if you have any info on this, I have not checked this week. I have been told, I have not verified. Used to, um, the way it worked is on the personal account, you could put a link in after a thousand followers. I have an account like that. Um, oh. So you build a thousand followers, then you can put a link in. You could switch to a business okay. account and put a link in straight away. Um, I also found some people that were unable to do that based on various reasons. And, and there can always be like, they use these um, catch all terms and conditions where they can basically do whatever they want, whenever they want. Yeah. Um, but uh, if anybody had, yeah, Alex, if you have any feedback on that, if that has changed, somebody told me that you have to now have a business account to get a link. If you're not grandfathered into under the thousand followers, personal account, um, but but I can tell you that whatever it is true today, it could also change in the future. So Alex, sure. do we know anything about that or do we not? Or so I'm not I'm not 100 percent positive if wait, hang on. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. OK, so I'm not 100 percent positive um, on the fact that there's no link anymore in personal accounts, because the problem with opening a business <clears throat> account is it limits your access to certain sounds because they become copyright copyrighted and you're not allowed to use them for business purposes. But when you have a personal account, you can work your way around that. And now I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm not 100% positive that the requirement is still just a thousand followers to um, put a link in your bio. Now that might've changed because they did just yeah. release a brand new algorithm, but that might've changed. Yeah. So okay. basically, Basically, if you have a thousand followers, you, it unlocks your account for like creator mode and it takes your personal account. It's kind of the same with Facebook that you can get a professional account once you hit about a thousand followers, I believe. Gotcha. And they basically allow you to see data for your following. So they let you see analytics and they let you put a link in your bio, but you have to have a thousand followers. And that's kind of what we're focusing on right now is building up these new accounts and one of the things we're going to be showing everybody soon as well is how you can actually boost your accounts. You can pay money to basically um, supercharge your account with followers. So it unlocks, it's kind of like an algorithm verified profile because you don't only just get the ability to add links to your bio, but this is kind of addressing what Alan was talking about earlier is uh, it also makes it a lot easier for you to get into the algorithm because when you don't have any followers, the, the algorithms don't really trust your profile. And right. so it's a lot harder to get views. And so one of the ways you can shortcut that is you can use ads. And that's something that we're going to talk about because they're really, really easy to use. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Florian, did I say that right? Go ahead and, and unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Ryan. You can call me Flo. It's easier for uh, American or English speakers. Um, so my question is, uh, are there any good tutorials uh, how to learn uh, system I.O., how to, to use it? Yeah, so um, we are going to cover everything that's necessary to use System.io and some stuff that's going to help optimize things as well as we move through the next seven weeks. But if you go in system, so like once you log in, I'm, I'm visually thinking this through, but I believe it's up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a button called help. When you click to help, it gives you like three choices. And one of them is like knowledge base or something to that effect. It's in the lower left. If you click that, they have a, a ton of stuff. And I'm not sure if they're video tutorials, 
uh, there might be some, there's text tutorials with screenshots that kind of walk you through different categories. And if you're uncertain about something, you can also drop an email to system <clears> support <throat> um, and they'll come back and they have linked me to, you know, just be like, you know, I need this. And can you give me the links to the resources? And, and they've linked me to all the specific tutorials on specific things I've been looking for. So you learned your stuff by in there or did you go to YouTube and watch other YouTubers using how to use it? Um, I didn't go to YouTube and use system, uh, watch system specifically. I do with other things. Like if I want to learn how to do something, uh, YouTube is definitely a thing that I go to regularly. And that's not a wrong answer. If you like YouTube and you can find the tutorials you want, definitely go with it. For me, <clears throat> it wasn't necessary on system because um, I use so many CRMs that they're a lot the same. So I just needed a few finer points. But um, you know, when I first started out, the very first time I used a CRM, yeah, I spent tons of time on YouTube watching videos, how to use it for sure. So is it, is it possible to uh, control your leads, like uh, separate uh, customers from not, not yet buying leads or how to analyze uh, when uh, leads unsubscribe from the newsletter? So you can definitely get stats on like unsubscribes and stuff like that. Um, and you can get other stats and there are some controls, but you can't really control when someone buys in an automated way unless, so the way it works is system has their own products. And if you want to go sell your own product, like you were selling, I'm just using hair products to some, cause I think someone dropped it in there. Um, if you had hair products and you wanted to sell it, you could set them up in system, right? And you could sell your own products and then it would know if somebody bought. But if you're selling like the the chat riches short or the short form riches course, if you're selling um, some random affiliate or you're selling, you know, like some service or something, unless you're selling it yourself, your own product through system, it won't know when someone has bought. So the way that um, I typically handle that like with an affiliate offer is send like seven to 14 days of one offer and probably someone's going to buy or they're not going to buy. And then I just move on to the next offer and you can always revisit those people with those things. But, um, you know, there's not, there's not really a way if you go into a control panel with an affiliate and they give you the email addresses of the people that buy and that person happened to buy with the same email address as they have in system, then you could manually pull those people over and mark them. And that might be kind of useful because mm -hmm. like, I think Jasper does that um, to know who the buyers are, but otherwise there's, you can't really track that. So there is no automated system for that yet. Or I just uh, used, uh, I had a look at click tip, uh, but uh, it's a long time ago. I don't know how good it is. <laughs> yeah. That's not something that I've really, um, pushed hard into i'm not saying it's impossible there. but um it, there's there's no ready button solution to easily do that in system that i know of thank you you bet magnus what's up yeah uh fine thanks um i'm i'm thinking of uh of a setup with uh you know kind of save your job uh, but in a sequence where uh, where different products are offered in in you know as you know what they need to to set up their own online business so to speak. But uh, you say that uh, seven emails usually are are necessary to make a sale, and well, I I added thirty six uh, emails yesterday to my cloud funnels account not click funnels cloud funnels and um, i can set up uh, the sequence but i mean if they convert how do these services usually send some some sort of signal back so i know that i can skip you know <laughs> that i can skip the, the sequence or and and you know skip forward or how does it work so each service is going to be different and I'm not saying that there aren't services out there that do that through some sort of um, API hook or Zapier or something like that. And that's not um, something that I have specifically checked into like this year uh, in the past, you know, what, what are we like six, eight, six weeks in? I have not looked at it in like the past six weeks or so to see and really studied that. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but I, I just don't know that answer for sure the way that typically run it is I just run a sequence for a while and then move on to the next one. 
but um, it's possible. The challenge here is that that becomes a little bit more complex as we start to try to hook together uh, different systems and that sort of stuff. And I, it's not something that I necessarily plan to teach here in the class because I think it will overcomplicate things for a lot of people. And we need to stay focused on the core thing, which is um, we need to get the leads and we need to get the, you know, send them emails and make some sales as far as that goes. I also wouldn't stress too much about it unless you're making like, that's kind of an optimization question is what I'm getting at. So optimization is an amazing thing. And we will talk more about that later on. And I'm all for optimization. Like I work on our stuff, optimizing it constantly, but you have to have something to optimize first. So like you think you made like 36 emails. I mean, that's awesome. So I would send them. I mean, do you, once you know your conversion rate, um, you can kind of get an idea that, you know, X people are buying. All right, now I want to go in here and optimize this. But unless you're farther down the track where you're making a bunch of sales, personally, I have found that it, it actually undermines my ability to double down and make more sales by worrying about when to switch. I just like, in your case, run your 36 emails and then if they haven't bought after 36 days of seeing something, then they might, and you could revisit them later if it's a high dollar product or you just want to revisit them later. And that's a great thing, but I would move them over to a different thing. And if you find that um, your conversion rate's really high, maybe you can dial back some of those emails and see if it affects your conversion rate. But um, I don't have the answer about how you hook it together off the top of my head right now. But basically, I, sh I should focus on on having a SUI sequence for for one product or service, and then have another uh, sequence for uh, another product or service. Is that so? Ab um, absolutely, because you want to continue to sell to these people, right? You don't want to get somebody in and just sell them thirty six emails and then just like quit. You want to like sell them 36 emails and then you put a tag or some sort of trigger at the bottom of that, that sequence that then moves them into the next campaign. So if they come in and they're buying, okay, so for example, if they come in there and you're selling them short form riches like this course here, then you sell them like 36 emails of that. And then at the end of it, you know, you go over there and you sell them Jasper. And then after you sell them so many emails of that, you go over there and you sell them, you know, whatever, right? You, you want to keep selling to them constantly. Um, until they either unsubscribe or that, you know, they don't, because if they don't unsubscribe, then they're welcoming the emails you're sending. Does that make sense? I guess. <laughs> okay. Yes. Is the answer to your question. You definitely would want, you want the emails to be relevant, right? So if you're selling product a and you do 36 emails that are relevant for product a, cause you're talking about it and linking to it at the very end of your 36 emails, you want to put some trigger action that then moves them over into product B and then start selling them however many emails on product B. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess. So you, do you have one list that you segment or do you have different lists for different products? Um, if they're related enough, and I, I found that it's easier to keep them related enough, like it works better for me, then um, no, I don't, I don't segment it out. So I've gone both directions. I am a master at overcomplicating things. Like I love systems and I dive in deep to them. And, um, like I'm seriously really good at, at overcomplicating things. And I have historically tagged things to death. Like, I mean, I had so many tags in my, uh, CRM on different things. And I tag everything. Like I tag, if they clicked a link, I tag, if they clicked the link this time and that time and, and who they are and how they came in and this and that and the other. And at the end of the day, I found that like 98% of my tags were useless because I was not taking any action on them and they were not helping me make any more money. And so, um, you know, after studying and doing my own, like I, uh, do coaching with other people that are ahead of me and stuff. They're like, just simplify things, just like, just cut it out. And so like, I just got rid of all, like, I literally went in and deleted entire categories of tags. And now I just have like a handful of tags that really help me. And, um, and I make more money doing it. So it, it, simplicity is the key, but you can definitely track whatever you want to track. I would just encourage you to actually take a step back once in a while and be like, is this helping me make any money? Or is this just wasting my time and focus? Hmm. Okay, thanks. Yep, you bet. All right, so um, we are super late. Fitzgerald, I'm going to go ahead with you and then we're going to uh, close this down. I thank you for everybody for staying. And uh, again, if you need to go, I appreciate that you've been here this long. Um, hello, could you hear me? Yes. 
Yeah, um, sorry about being the last one. I'm, I'm gonna try and make this quick, but um, so I'm relatively new here and I'm new to like the whole, in fact, I'm new to like the whole business, whole um, interface and everything, but I've been watching a sure. lot of Chase Rayner's videos on YouTube. And um, ever since I've seen his videos, I've had like a lot of energy in terms of um, putting all that energy towards um, trying to learn how to um, use Jasper AI, because that's the, actually the product I want to sell. I want to sell the Jasper AI products. And so far about the past two days, I signed up on Jasper AI through the affiliate link. Um, I've created a CapCut account as well and everything so I can make my videos. And I'm planning on even using the videos that Chase Rainer's made. I wanna copy and paste them and then add that sort of um, reaction that was found on, I think it was iStock or something like that. It was through that website. Okay, sure. Yeah, I've watched um, all the courses of the video. So my question is, once I do happen to post um, my video, on let's say TikTok or YouTube, how would I put my redirect link along with that video? Would I put on the comments or like, how would I go about that? Anywhere and everywhere you can. So I would put it, if you can put it in the video as some sort, if you can say it in the video, that's great. If you can put it as text in the video, whether that's auto-generated through CapCut or you put like a caption on there that says it. If you're showing something in the video, like you show the URL bar or whatever, um, or even show like notepad with it written out, whatever, I would do that. I would put it in the comments. I would put it in the description, like put it everywhere you can put it. Um, that way that no matter um, where somebody lands, so they, they have a chance to get to your link. Okay, that's great. And um, you would say that throughout this whole course, it's sort of like beginner friendly, right? Because I mentioned before, I'm not really too used to the whole business interface and everything, but um I feel like I do have a lot of energy to like, when I'm really focused on something, I can try and like knock it out completely. So I'm kind of directing out that energy towards this course and trying to do well. So yeah, I just want to soak up as much info as possible about the course. Yeah, so 100%. So first of all, energy is great. And I'm glad that, that you are um, energized and ready to go. And so that's awesome. And I would definitely direct that at the things uh, I would say the course is beginner friendly. The, in fact, I spent some time on the phone yesterday with Alex um, and I've spent some time with James Jernigan, who's going to come in here later on in the course and teach and um, really dialing in and, and being thoughtful about structuring the course that we can provide everything. And there's going to be some things that come along the way that are like, we found this amazing new thing that's just performing amazing right now. And so we're going to kind of like deviate and go do that. And that might look a little different as we go, depending on the time and how that pops up. Um, because we always want to bring anything that's like super focused and super performing. But otherwise, I'm working really hard to be thoughtful and structure the course in a thoughtful way that is that kind of leads us through things. And that is beginner friendly. Um, you know, and again, there's the replays, so you can definitely grab the replays. And you can uh, taking action here, like your key will be take action along the way. Because we have questions like right now, and we don't normally go this late, but um, we have questions at the end of things. And then there's the Facebook group too. And um, then there's also the uh, um, Facebook messenger group as well. Eli is always in there, like helping people and talking to people and a bunch of other people too. Right. So um, we have all of those things. So that way, as you get, if you get stuck along the way and you're like, all right, I've got all of these links in the chain, but I'm like kind of missing this one link to put it all together. Just ask the question, and then we can cover that sort of thing. But overall, I'm going to endeavor along with Alex and James to very much cover what you need and show, like, you know, show you exactly what we do. Like, I'm not going to leave this stuff out. I'm going to show you what we do, right? Step by step by step to get do exactly what we do. And you can apply that, you know, then to selling Jasper and selling anything you want and the whole process. All right. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you so much. And I appreciate the comments in the chat too. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. All right. Um, so we're basically done. Eli popped his hand up and he's always super positive. So I'd love to hear whatever you have to say, Eli. But if you need to go, thank you very much. And um, I will see you guys on Thursday. And then I am going to actually shut it down after Eli's done. Yeah, sorry about that. Doing everything to the last moment. That's typical me, isn't it? I'll keep it quick. Um, taking action without a doubt. We, we've already spoken about that. Um, I totally agree with that. Listen, there's no excuse. 
um, to take action, no matter how small it is. I've literally, I was in the hospital bed on my phone yesterday um, because I had a problem with my back, bad scans, etc. What you can do on the computer, you can do on the phone. So there's no excuse, even though you may have had a plan to do 10, 10 videos, maybe in a difficult situation, you're tired, just do one instead but at least do something every day. Otherwise what happens is if you find an excuse and you've been consistent for a few days and you stop for one, it's very difficult to start up again. So if you don't keep to the, the bigger picture you wanted to do for the day, do something small. Don't have a problem making mistakes too. Don't think to yourself, it has to be perfect. Make mistakes. By making mistakes, you learn to perfect. It's never gonna be perfect on the same day. I'm still making mistakes all the time. Another thing also is a lot of people I see, they're having um, issues setting up the back end. And I get that. If you're not technically minded, if you're not used to setting up the sequence and the process, then at least start your videos while you're doing that, because then you're warming up your account, right? Um, as long as you know what niche you're going into. So for instance, if you're selling the course or you're selling soaps or whatever, as long as you know the niche you want to go into, start the videos. Again, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to always have the websites there. If you're not, not quite sure, start something. So you're warming up the account while you're doing the back end. And it's not just a situation you're making mistakes, putting links in and et cetera. But it can be unnerving to know how to use the interface for TikTok or the interface for, for the video or how to... Um, be confident, do something, because by making the mistakes every single day, you become better. So by the time you've done the back end, you're a boss, right? You've learned all the mistakes when it comes to the video. So then when everything comes to, uh, together, at least you're further on with your videos. I mean, that's my two cents about regarding the video side of it. And also, Ryan, I see people are scratching their head. They're saying, yeah, yeah, yeah when it comes to um, the process, but they're still scratching their head. Maybe it's a good thing that we do a checklist. Doesn't matter how basic it is. They're finding it difficult to visualize how everything connects together. And, and, I, and you're totally right. It can, you know, the whole thing can be quite flexible. But I think if we do some kind of cheat sheet, something basic for people, even if we have three types of cheat sheets to cover everything or one, then I think it's easier for people to get up to speed, maybe. And then it's easier for us to make um, reference to those sheets, you know, if they're still scratching their head. And you can get, look, why don't you look at the, the sheets? And by the time you've looked at it, maybe next week you can come back while looking at this video we've just done. And then I think it will be easier for the people that are having the problem with the process. Because I get it if you're not used to, you know, putting all these blocks together, it's difficult to understand how they interact with each other. Maybe we should put some kind of something like that together, I don't know. So um, yes, but the, the, the biggest takeaway I think is, please don't have a problem making a mistake. It's very important. You have to think in your head, it's important to make mistakes because it's, it's not gonna be perfect at the beginning. The quicker you make the mistakes, the faster you make the mistakes, the better you can perfect the system. If you think like that, you're not gonna stall. You're just gonna get on with things. I hope that makes sense. 100% Eli. Um, yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, I, in fact, I would love to like steal the, can I, can I steal the first part of your little video there and like post it on Facebook? Uh, and you're always stealing my stuff. So what's, what's <laughs> new? Keep on stealing. <laughs> um i love it i love it uh so i love the idea about the checklist in fact i would love to invite you uh in chat maybe uh you can give me some ideas on that i would love to talk to you about that offline and um the uh because it's a useful to have another perspective on because when i go in and make a checklist i'm like whatever but um, I need to make sure that I have a second person that's like, nah, hang on, we missed something. Um, but also, uh, I love what you're saying. Um, I love the fact that you're so positive when you come on and ready to help everyone. And props to you for being in the hospital and still sticking with it. I mean, that is dedication. And that is the, um, honestly, I mean, that's the kind of thing you're setting yourself up for success because you're teaching your brain that like we do this no matter what. And that's awesome. I love it. 
Yeah, exactly, without a doubt. And um, I've had to take six weeks off work because of it. And you know what? When I've gone into my, my Buddhist members, they're going to go, what are you going to do? And I say, listen, it's a good thing I'm off for six weeks. I may not get paid for it, but that's cool because it gives me the opportunity to focus on the things I need to go further in my life. Everything happens for a reason. Never fear when something comes up and so-called negative. It happens for a reason. So just look why it's happened, flip it on his head and just get on with it. Simple. It's the same thing when I was in pain in hospital and I didn't take any medication. And they said, don't you want medication? I said, listen, if a woman can be in childbirth and not take medication, I'm sure I can, can deal with this pain. Do you, you, you get me? Do you know I mean? And that's how I think of things. And I just get on with it. You know, there's always somebody in a worse situation than you. Yeah. When you understand 100%. that, then you just get on with it. You know, oh, I'm hungry. You know, what am I going to eat? Man, you've got some pasta in the fridge and whatever else. There's other people that they can't even get water. This is how you've got to think. You've got to think, right, what, if I, what can I do with my life? Put these things together, get on with it. You know, make the mistakes. That's the most important thing. Think it, stop thinking about having it perfect. It doesn't, life doesn't happen like that. Your, your, you know, your relationship with your partner is not like that when you first met the partner. You make mistakes, you learn about each other, and it's the same thing when it comes to your working practice. Yeah, look forward to making the mistakes. If you do that, you'll get on with things. You'll move faster. I promise you. I love it. It's a hundred percent true. And um, thank you for sharing, Eli, because I think uh, we all needed that. All right, everyone. We will see you on Thursday, and we have a great class coming with Alex on Thursday. And until then, as Eli hit the ball on the head by working in the hospital, take action and be safe, and we'll see you then.